Rebuilding a model steam plant at part 9 and once again I've caught another cold and I apologise for the deep voice. There's quite a lot to do in this episode, commencing reassembly of the Stuart No. 10 V steam engine, looking at the piece of cylinder cladding from Stuart models, cleaning the cylinder port face using wet and dry sandpaper, refitting the steam chest studs, cleaning up the steam chest cover and top cylinder cover, fitting gaskets and installing the slide valve, showing a common problem with these small engines. Bolting the engine to the base and trying a test run. And here's the story so far. I didn't really show the painting of the main engine standard, but as you can see in this clip, it's definitely painted Stuart Green. I don't need to paint the cylinder because this is going to be covered in a piece of cladding. I bought this from Stuart Models the other day. They call it lagging, I call it cladding, but I'm not going to split hairs. It was £9. Here's a clip of one of my Stuart triple expansion engines running. This one runs okay, but it does need a bit of a rebuild. I think I'm going to sell it. I don't have the time to rebuild it. I've already done some work on this engine. I made a short series about it, but I think I'm definitely going to sell it. So if anyone's interested, please contact me. You do need to be aware though, that even in this condition, this type of engine is not cheap. This modern cylinder cladding from Stuart Models is made from anodized aluminium. It used to be steel. The cladding on this engine, as I received it, was made from a piece of brass. But I really don't like the look of it, so I flattened it out to use as a template so I can make one of these pieces of cylinder cladding out of the anodized aluminium. I'm also further going to cut up this piece to make some cladding for the S52, so it all matches. I need to do something about the port face because originally, as I received the engine, it was in a bit of a mess. It was quite rusty and damaged. I spent a lot of time rubbing the cylinder's port face up and down on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper and round and round, side to side, figure of eight, you name it, I did it. It's important to use a flat surface for this and keep the cylinder level at all times. It's okay for me, I've done so much of this over the years, I can do it in my sleep. I do try not to, but I could if I wanted. I rubbed this part on the piece of wet or dry sandpaper for quite a long time, and even after a while it wasn't perfect, but it should be fine. Now it's time to look in my box of Stuart 7BA studs to find some studs of the correct length to fit into the cylinder. If you look closely at these studs, you will generally notice that the thread on one end is shorter than the thread on the other end, and the idea is the short piece goes into the cylinder block. This allows the studs to be all set to the same length. Now it's time to go into the main workshop and clean up the cylinder cover. There's just enough metal on the register of the cylinder cover that fits into the cylinder to clamp it in my Myford lathe. And from a health and safety point of view, I've wrapped a piece of emery cloth around a mahogany stick. This keeps my fingers much further from the rotating part. And now you can see the cylinder cover is much improved. This is a steam chest cover and it was fitted to the engine just as cast. This is no good. I need to clean it up. I don't like to paint steam chest covers or steam chests or cylinder covers for that matter. When I look at most full size steam engines, these parts are not painted. Once the part is shiny though, it's going to go rusty, but you can get around that by using an oily rag. I have to admit at this stage that I did cheat a little bit. I used my one inch belt sander to remove the bulk of the rough cast metal, but I didn't show this in the video because I didn't want to encourage anybody to try this. It's not something for the faint hearted. You can easily make a big mistake when using a power tool to clean the front face of this. Once I'd initially cleaned it up on the belt sander and then as I've just shown on the emery cloth, I finished the job on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. This is 400 grit. And now it looks like this. Here's a kit of parts, including a couple of gaskets that are made, ready to fit to the engine. As you can see, I painted the Stuart logo red. Now I think it looks a lot better than it did originally. The time has come to find four studs that are exactly the same length and fit them in place. I know that these studs look slightly too long if you look closely at them, but don't forget I haven't fitted the gaskets yet. 
I think I'll do that now. I'd like to show you something interesting as well. I made these gaskets in the main workshop and cut a rectangular shape on both of the gaskets. This clip shows the gaskets fitted and all I need to do is tighten the nuts on the end of the studs. Where the gaskets are slightly too big externally that is not a problem. I always trim them with a Stanley knife. After a quick rummage in my 7BA assorted box, I find four 7BA nuts. And in the box which contains the parts that I took off the engine in the first place, I find and refit the mounting bolts to hold the sole plate to the box bed. In no time at all, the sole plate is bolted to the box bed and I can go on to the next part of the job. Here is a 6BA Allen head grub screw that I fitted to the eccentric sheave. Take a close look at the steam chest. The casting is thicker at the bottom than it is at the top, and also the gasket that I fitted is too big and needs trimming. If I don't trim this, there will be a problem, and this is how it was when I first got this engine. To overcome this, the builder fitted the slide valve in position like this, and it's not right. It doesn't fully span the ports. So at each end of the stroke, a small amount of compressed air gets straight to the exhaust port and doesn't do any work. One of the problems with casting steam ports is they're not always the size they should be. And sometimes you do need to trim the valve to make it match the ports. For the moment, and once again, for the purposes of the video, being a tutorial, I'm leaving the slide valve in the wrong position. Time to oil the engine. It's very important with steam engines or any other mechanical device that there's plenty of lubrication between the moving parts. In this clip, I still haven't turned the valve around, so it's not in the right position. It will be eventually, but not yet. I haven't fully finished cleaning up the cylinder cover. Not only does it need cleaning up around the edge a bit more, it needs a gasket making for it too. I'm using this clip to illustrate that at each end of the stroke there's a really big blow to exhaust, at both ends in fact. But miraculously the engine runs anyway. And it runs well, it is after all quite well made, apart from the centre boss of the flywheel that in my opinion could do with truing up. The problem is that this engine would use too much steam and not give sufficient power. It wastes steam at each end of the stroke. I will address this in the next episode, and with a bit of luck, my voice should have returned to normal by then. That's it for now, I think I'll take some drugs and go back to bed. Stay safe, and unlike me, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.